Well, it is two o'clock. So I think what we'll do is as other stragglers come in at the last moment, I will just uh, go ahead and let them populate while I give a brief introduction here. I'm Brett Augustine, Recovery Business Advisor for North Central Texas Small Business Development Center, which is a leading provider for assistance for small businesses. And we are grant funded, which allows us to offer this and many other uh, services at no cost to you. As far as things today, just housekeeping notes, please remember that we'll be keeping in the chat a list of questions for Ms. Gibby. At the end, we'll go over all of those as we go. And I'll be happy to take those questions at the end and Ms. Gibby will be answering them. Speaking of, today we'll be doing how to improve outcomes by giving constructive feedback presented by Lorna Kivy, and she's with the ASBDC conference speakers now for many years, as well as 10 years experience working with the SBDC Florida Gulf Coast University. And if that's not enough for you, she's also a leadership expert, and we're happy to have her today and all her expertise. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Ms. Lorna Kivy. Well, thank you. Hello, everybody. We are continuing our series and communication issues. And today we're gonna focus on feedback, constructive feedback. So this is a really important skill for us as leaders and actually as coworkers. Feedback is so important and yet we sometimes really hesitate to give feedback because it can be uncomfortable. And sometimes when we do it, we mess it up, making it worse. But even worse, sometimes we don't do it at all. That's a real problem too. So we're gonna talk about those issues today. And we're also gonna talk about how to do it right to make it more comfortable for you to be able to give feedback and receive feedback. Because if we do it the right way, it's really a, a, a really wonderful thing to do to be able to help each other to improve performance because feedback is really meant to be positive and something that helps us to improve, not something that is, is so horrible that we, we can't deal with it. I'm gonna share my screen right now so you can uh, let me know if you're seeing my screen. Uh, wait, that's not it, that's the button, here we go. So you can see my screen okay? All righty. So the first thing I always like to start with, with many of you know, if you've been on my sessions before, I always like to start with definitions. Whenever I'm gonna do a subject, I go to the dictionary and I look up the definition. Because it's like, what are we really talking about? And this, believe it or not, this is the definition of constructive feedback, a tool used to create positive change in the workplace. How about that? A tool used to create positive change in the workplace. See, by its very nature, it's meant to be constructive, something that helps, something that's positive. But there is a difference, you know, there, this is something that sometimes is, is misunderstood because we have different definitions for different things. So I'm gonna talk about three definitions here that all come together to, into the content that I wanna talk about today. And the first is coaching, because coaching is really a big part of constructive feedback. Giving people positive feedback means helping them to solve problems for themselves. The big distinguishing thing in coaching is that it's about asking questions. So when you look at the definition of coaching, it focuses on positive reinforcement and development of new skills. So if you've ever been in a situation where you've coached somebody or someone has done a good job of coaching with you, you know what happens is they ask you questions that helps you to really process and think about how to improve your skills. Feedback is meant to be that way. It's meant to be, you know, I observed this and do you think there's a better way? So that's an important definition in feedback. We'll, we'll use coaching a lot when we use constructive feedback. Another one is counseling. Now, although I say that feedback is about positive and it's always about positive, that's true, there are different uses of feedback and counseling is one of them, which focuses on corrective action and changing inappropriate or ineffective behavior. If you are someone who has supervised others, you've probably found yourself in a situation where you needed to do more of a counseling situation. Oh no, the you are the stroke. It happened again. Sorry. Working at home is great. Spanky, quiet. 
Good boy. Good boy. <laughs> you probably found yourself in a situation where you could do counseling. Really, Spanky, you probably have. Like right now, I would like to say to you, it's not polite to bark when I'm on a webinar. <laughs> Sometimes we have to talk about behavior that's not effective, about performance that needs improvement. And that's where counseling comes in. So constructive feedback can be through that channel too. What it should be is criticism. When you look at this definition of criticism, the expression of disapproval based on perceived faults or mistakes. The practice of judging merits and faults. We need to put a big X through that one because constructive feedback is not criticism. It's not about judging others. It's not about judgment at all. Feedback is about what you observe and what we can do to change behavior so that we have a better outcome. It's not at all about judging. Just the, the word perception in that definition is the one that drives me crazy, right? The expression or disapproval based on perceived faults. Um, are we having a problem with sound? Is that what I just read? We're okay? All right. So the expression or disapproval based on perceived faults or mistakes. Constructive feedback is not about judgment. It's not about perception. So what we really want to focus on is the counseling, counseling and coaching aspect of giving constructive feedback. You know, this really should be simple, right? I mean, it really, it's easy. You know, you define expectations with your people, right? You check their progress, and then you give them feedback. And through that feedback, you either reward them, give them positive feedback, tell them they're doing a great job, or you redirect them and have a conversation about how we can improve it, how we can do better, give them that positive feedback. So why is it hard? <laughs> Why is feedback so hard? Why don't we, why don't we speak up? Well, there's a lot of reasons we don't speak up. As you know, you don't want to hurt their feelings. It's hard to have that conversation with someone to say that you feel like something's not going right or something could be better. You don't want to look like a jerk. You know, I don't want to be the one that delivers this bad news, right? Don't want to cause a fight. You don't want to be on their bad side. They might retaliate. Ooh, that's a real thing. You know, sometimes retaliation is it's very scary. What if they start telling you about what you did wrong? Eek. <laughs> um, sometimes we're nervous about the political ramifications. And sometimes we probably should be nervous because there can be ramifications, political, retaliation, otherwise. And sometimes we think it's not our place to speak up, right? It's, well, this really isn't any of my business. This is not my, my place. That's not really a very nice position to have because feedback remember is positive. It's about helping somebody. It comes from a good place. The thing is, we have this common belief that we want harmony. And, and isn't that a beautiful thought? <laughs> we just want a harmonious working place. You know, we don't want to have to work where there's a lot of politics or there's a lot of, you know, disagreement or conflict. We just want harmony. And because we want harmony, sometimes we're not very good at addressing problems. Sometimes we just believe if we ignore it, it'll go away. <laughs> it doesn't. <laughs> it doesn't. I mean, who doesn't want a calm, peaceful work environment, right? We all do. We tend to just be uncomfortable about confronting others about the problems. And so we don't, we don't address them. That can be disastrous. It can be disastrous. You know, the number one demotivator for staff in the US, survey after survey, read it anywhere, go Google it, read, read all the books, the management books. The number one demotivator over and over again is that my supervisor tolerates poor performance. My supervisor tolerates poor performance. Have you ever been that person who's working your tail off and somebody else is not pulling their weight? And everybody's afraid to say something and nobody does anything about it. Talk about something that really shoots down your morale. That's it, right? That's an awful situation to be in. And we see it over and over. We have to be able to address problems. And knowing how to use feedback in a constructive way really helps. I would ask you, and I know some of you, I think, cannot see the screen. 
So let me try to describe, I'm, I have a continuum up on the screen and on one side it says maintain harmony and on the other it says address problems. So I would ask you to think for a second and just answer, where do you land on the scale? Do you think you're the kind of person who just does everything you can to avoid that confrontation and to just have that harmonious environment? Or are you someone that like you're addressing those problems, you're right on it, anytime you see something you're speaking up, which, which, where do you land on that continuum? It's something to think about personally, because if you are that person who likes harmony and is avoiding addressing problems, you're probably causing more problems than you're solving. You know that those kind of things could just fester in a work environment and be destructive. If you're the kind of person who's always ready to address problems, the question I would ask is, are you taking time to think through how you're going to address the problem or are you acting from emotion? Right? And that's where constructive feedback comes in to help us here so easily because there's a really simple method that we can use that will help us to address problems effectively and get the result that we need. Constructive feedback focuses on encouraging. It encourages the receiver to find solutions. And as you know, that's typical of a coaching relationship. We're encouraging the receiver to find solutions, to see the problem for themselves, and then to work to make it better. We're using observations of events to do this. We're sticking to facts, not feelings. You know, we have to be careful when we start talking to somebody and we say, well, you know, I feel like you always do this. What does that put me on the defense, right? And that's not how constructive feedback works to be effective. So it's about observation of what we see. Sometimes I fall into situations, especially with leaders, where they're afraid to say something because they didn't actually see it happen. Somebody told them it happened. Well, that alone is a fact. You know, someone reported to me that you were drinking on your lunch hour at Joe's restaurant. I, I didn't see it, but the fact that someone reported it to me is still a fact that I need to address. We'll talk about how to do that effectively through constructive feedback. Being specific is so important. You're going to hear me say that so many times in the next three hours. Oh, wait, we don't have three hours. Well, you're going to hear me say that a lot. Be specific. That's so important. You know, if anyone has ever been on that end where people are giving you feedback, one of the first questions I always ask is, when did I do that? What, what example do you have of that? I, I don't remember. I don't know what you're talking about. You know, if you can be specific and say, this is when it happened and this is what I saw, that makes it so much more effective. Directed at the behavior, not the personality. You know, we need to be talking about behaviors, not the fact that you're always a scumbag or whatever. <laughs> We're directing it at the, be the observable behavior. And remember that it, it, it can be both positive and negative. And this is one of the things I want to talk about you know, when I get through some of the steps here to show you how to do that. It's just don't forget that feedback is also positive. And I think it's almost kind of disturbing that when I talk about constructive feedback, most people are already thinking in the negative. Are you? Are you thinking this is to address problems only? No. What feedback is about is trying to get the behavior that we want repeated. And when we take time to give positive feedback, that's what happens. When you tell somebody, boy, I really like the way you did that. Guess what? They're going to do it that way again and probably get better at it. So don't forget that when we talk about feedback, it can be both positive and negative. We'll talk a little more about that too. All right, so in order to be successful here, I'm going to take you through six very simple steps and I'm going to be straight with you. I'm breaking this out into six steps just to really get my point across about the right way to do it and how it should sound. Okay, then when I get to the end, I'm just going to put it all together for you and it's just going to be so simple and you're going to be like, oh, I got this. You know, I know, I know how to do this. So a lot of it is is really logical. It's just that especially in the heat of the moment, or maybe after the moment is chilled, we don't really think through how to say things and how to do things in a constructive way. So my job here is to show you with six simple steps how to do it. Now, in order to make this effective, since we're virtual, you know, and it's not quite the same as being face-to-face -face or having you be able to talk to me, I'm gonna talk to myself. I hope you don't mind. I, you know, my husband always says, if he, uh, if I hear him talking to himself, that means he's just having an intelligent conversation. 
<laughs> so I'm going to have an intelligent conversation with me. <laughs> I'm going to base this on a scenario. And as I go through the six steps, I'm going to talk through the scenario and how each step works in the scenario. Okay. All right. So here's our scenario. This morning, my team had this meeting and it was a, a really good meeting. We made a big decision about how to move forward with a really difficult project. So I'm feeling very good that we made this decision. We all agreed on it. We, we know what we're going to do. Now, one of my employees, Mary, she didn't say a word through the whole meeting, which um, she doesn't, she doesn't speak up a lot. So, okay. But the thing that was really disturbing was this. I'm walking back to my office and I stopped to fill up my coffee cup and I can hear Mary ranting to two of her coworkers about what a stupid decision we just made. I was like shocked because she didn't say anything during the meeting. She was saying how stupid it was and how it would never work. She just, she just went on and on. She was elaborating as to all the reasons why. I really just wanted to jump in right there, but I knew I was, I was angry. And uh, probably that wasn't the best time to, to get the result I needed and embarrass her in front of the, the coworkers, especially since I know she's supposedly a little shy and I might just have had a meltdown right in front of her. So I, I just went on back to my office to think about how to do this. Then I called Lorna Kibbe and said, hey, Lorna, need to do some constructive feedback. How do I go about doing this? And here's what we learned, the six steps that we can take. All right, so the first step is this, get ready. <laughs> yeah, you need to do a little thinking before you jump in, just like in that scenario. You know, my first reaction would be to jump in and say, what? <laughs> but we don't want feedback to come from the reaction realm. We want it to come from the response realm. You know, how do we respond, not how do we react? So I didn't want to jump in with the emotion. I really needed to, to get ready and to think about how I was going to do it. And that's the first decision is when to give that feedback, how soon. Because, you know, there are some people that they think, you know, I want to know it the second that you see it. Then there are other other people that say, eh, just think about it before you come to me. Whether you're the receiver or whether you're the giver, you just need to be aware of what's the right time to give feedback. In the heat of the moment, like in that situation, would not have been a good time. I wouldn't have done a good job because I probably would have had a meltdown. I was really just anger and it would have come from the wrong place. So I needed to go back and think about how I was going to do this and what I was going to say and just get my head straight before I did that feedback. Now, the other danger we have, and this might be for some of you who are on the other end of wanting that harmonious environment, is we decide just to wait. And we wait so long that it becomes something we think is irrelevant until it happens again. And then we're really sorry we didn't take care of it in the first place, right? So we have to think about how soon to do it. And then there's a lot of other things to think about. Like first, you know, just identify the situation. Well, the situation's clear. You heard what happened. I mean, that's the situation. I witnessed this myself. What behavior is triggering this? Well, that's interesting. You know, that's something I, I would want to think about a little because I'm, I'm not sure why Mary doesn't speak up in the meetings. You know, she doesn't. She, she hardly says anything. And then to go back and, and to hear her talking like that, you know, with her coworkers, I mean, where is that coming from? You know, so that's something I want to consider when, when I have constructive feedback session with her. I want to, I, want, I think I want to try to talk to her about that because I don't know. I don't know exactly what is triggering this. Is it that she is afraid to say something in a meeting? So then she has to say it after? I don't know. That's puzzling. Okay, where and when? Yeah, see, for this one, it was better that I didn't just do it right there in the office in front of everybody. I'm, I'm going to have a sit down with her somewhere, you know, and, and I got to be careful with this because I don't want it to be like, uh, I have something I want to talk to you about. Come and sit down. You know, I have to be careful if it's going to be constructive. I have to be a little careful about the way I do it and make sure it's more casual and conversational. So, but I'm going to do it today because. I think I need to address it. You know, I'm actually a little worried about the decision we made because some of our points, it may have been on target. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. So what facts do I have? Well, I have all the facts. I was at the meeting and I witnessed what happened. So I just got to make sure to state it in terms of the facts and not my emotion or feelings. Yeah. 
Has this happened before? That's something to think about. Oh, you know, to be straight with you, it has kind of happened before, but when it happened before, um, somebody told me that Mary had come back after a couple of meetings and had some comments that she didn't make during the meeting that worried them. I didn't think I should do anything about it because I didn't witness it. Uh, but now I'm thinking, you know, the fact is that somebody did tell me that twice. And if I had maybe approached her about the facts that I had, maybe, maybe I could have done something about this sooner. Maybe it wouldn't have gotten to this point. So now that I think about it, kind of has happened before and I think I ignored it. What will happen if I don't give feedback? Yeah, yeah, well, I think it's going to happen again. <laughs> I think it's going to continue to happen. And, and plus, to be honest, I mean, I might never get over it if I don't, if I don't deal with it, you know, today. So I, I think I'm going to have to. Okay, so that's step one. I hope this format's working with you. I was trying to think about how to, how to do this with you to help you, you know, kind of see what I'm talking about. Can I get some thumbs up? Is this okay if I do it this way? Or okay, I don't sound too crazy, right? <laughs> okay, all right, all right. So that's step one. You just kind of think about it before you just jump in. You got to think about it, plan it out, ask yourself some questions. You know, prepare yourself mentally. So just in case Mary comes in all defensive, you know, I've thought through these things, and it's not like just spur off the top of my head, which, you know, that's that's never really good to just react. This way I'll be able to respond better. All right, step two. Now I have to talk to Mary and I have to describe to her what I observed. So I'll probably start the discussion something like, um, I'd like to discuss um, that you always seem to have something bad to say after our meetings, but you don't say a word during the meeting. You just sit there like a lump. You say not a word, then you go out, you tell everybody you don't like what we did. Oh, wait, I think that's wrong. No, <laughs> I better look at step two a little more carefully. Hmm. Okay, let me think here. All right, so I, I want to tell it like it is, but uh, I need to be a little more sensitive, right? So I, I need to be sensitive. I need to think about the person and, and try to be friendly, right? And focus on the facts because, boy, you know, right there, a lot of feeling was coming out, my personal feelings about the whole situation. And I fear that might have sounded a little like, you know, accusatory, which that's probably not going to help because that's going to make her get defensive. So I need to focus on the facts and be specific with her about what I observed. Non-judgmental. Yeah. And see, I think maybe my judgment was coming through on that and that's not going to make it very good feedback. That's, that's probably not going to work too good. Oh, and I need to be positive. Jeez Louise. That's not easy. I'm going to have to think about how to make it a little more positive. All right. Let me think. Um, all right, let's see. I'll try it again. So let's see, uh, Mary, um, in our staff meeting this morning, I noticed you had very little to say. And, and truthfully, it's not really that unusual for you not to say much during a meeting. But right after the meeting, I heard you telling Mike and Stacy how unhappy you are with the decision that we made. You're an important part of our team and your opinions are important. And, and I want to hear what you have to say. I think that'll work, right? That'll get me going. I, I think I was sensitive, yeah. And the facts came through. I told her exactly what I observed. It was specific. I don't think I was judgmental and positive. I think I'm probably going to get a lot better result with that, don't you? I'm feeling a lot, a lot better about that. Okay. Okay. So that's that's the second step. All right. Oh, I'm good. Yeah, this is going to work. <sighs> Got to be positive. All right. Step three. Let's see. Step three. Explain why this is not okay. Why is this problem a problem? Okay. So I have to be very direct with her to explain why it's not okay and why it's a problem. Because to me, it's obvious, but to the person that I'm, I'm talking to, it may not be so obvious. So let me see here. What, what can I do? Describe how the behavior affected you or how you perceive it affected others. Okay. So I could say something like, 
You know, hearing you express your disagreement really caused me to question our decision. And I was feeling really confident about our decision. So, yeah, now, now I have reason to question. Or I could say, you know, that behavior of not saying anything during the meeting and then questioning everything after, um, that could really erode the confidence of the team because we all felt really good about the decision that we made. And I'm afraid that um, that might really erode confidence and we might do not do as well with that. So you can see how that's not good for our team. Uh, or I could say, you know, I need to be sure that everyone on the team is in agreement on the best way for us to proceed because you know that I'm really big on everybody having a chance to weigh in and that way we all have a lot better chance of buy-in as Patrick and Tony would tell us, right? That we need an opportunity to weigh in if we want people to buy in. And I, I need you to weigh in during the meeting. It's important that you do so that we can all make the best decision. Yeah, huh? Okay. So I'm telling her what the impact of this is, why the behavior impacts the team, and why it might why it could really hurt us. So impact. So that's step three. Okay, so let's see. So far, I've planned out what I'm gonna say and thought about it. And I, I made sure that I talked to her in positive terms with facts, observations, sensitive, and try to stay positive. And now I'm going to be sure that she understands exactly what the impact of this behavior is and, and how it affects the rest of us. So, all right, I think I'm ready for step four. Ask them for their thoughts and listen. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. I have to care what she thinks. <laughs> Yeah, it's probably a good idea. I think I have to ask her why why this happened and maybe what's keeping her from speaking up, you know. Um, and the thing is, I have to be careful with constructive feedback to make sure that we're having a dialogue and not just a conversation. You know, uh, sometimes I'm better at presenting information. <laughs> You know, I can present my case than exchanging perspectives. You know what I mean? It's like we need to help others feel like they're part of the process. And so I'm, I'm really going to have to solicit her opinions and her feedback in exchange. So it's going to have to be more of a dialogue where both of us are actively engaged in this conversation, not just me telling her what I think we should do. So let's see. Um, it should be open and relaxed. Yeah, that makes makes sense. I hope I can create that open and relaxed environment all the time, but yeah. Um, regular one on one two way conversations. Oh, okay. So that's probably part of creating an open and relaxed environment. If I'm, if I want things to be open and relaxed, uh, you know, like almost a, a part of our culture then I need to be doing this regularly. It's not just like when somebody gets in trouble, right? I should be practicing having dialogue with my employees all the time and remembering that these conversations should be two way. It's not just me presenting my case or presenting information, but it's me asking you what you think in exchange and listening to you, practicing active listening. Good thing we had that session on active listening just a week or two ago, you know, that way we know how to listen and that means Listening as if we're going to repeat back everything they have to say. I mean, just really focusing on them and listening to them and then reflecting that back. So listening, just really listening to what they have to say. You know, I, I have one friend in particular that I have some trouble with this because I talk to him and I don't think he hears me because he'll ask me a question about something I just told him like a few minutes later. <laughs> and I notice sometimes he's distracted, you know, he's looking over at his computer screen or, you know, sometimes even at his phone. I think he, I think he just is trying to do other things at the same time and he, he doesn't hear me. Um, I hope I'm not guilty of that. But I'm going to be really careful to make sure I listen to her, that I really practice that active listening. Pay attention to your tone and body language. Oh boy, this is another thing. I got to watch my facial expressions because I'm still upset about this, you know? So when I talk to her, I'm, I'm really going to have to be careful to, you know, have that neutral tone and, and those 
and not roll my eyes or anything. <laughs> tone is important too. Because, you know, you can be saying one thing, but with tone, it can sound completely different. So uh, you really have to watch your tone and keep it neutral for sure. And the other thing about tone is that sometimes even when you're using the right words, if you're using kind of a harsh tone, it comes out as criticism. It can sound judgmental even when you don't mean for it to be judgmental. Look for signs of people just going along with you. Mm, see, this is Mary. This is what I'm telling you. It, she just like goes along with me, you know. She just kind of makes me think that she's listening and paying attention and then goes out all cheery. And the fact is she didn't get any of it, you know. I gotta watch that. So that means that I'm going to have to really be active in encouraging this dialogue. And I'm, I'm going to have to put her on the spot, ask for her input, and, and be pretty persistent about it. Because I, I think that she will just go along with it just to get away from the situation. Encourage honest discussion. And, you know, that's a matter of trust, right? That comes with time. But I, I've really got to work on this, especially with Mary. Uh, getting that honest discussion and having her input is really important. So I think I think the question is going to be for her. Uh, so Mary, why do you think that that this happened? You know, what what's really keeping you from speaking up during the meetings? I, I noticed that you you don't speak up sometimes during the meetings. And like I said, I really value your opinion. I mean, I need everyone's talents to make this work, and and I want you to be able to speak up. So, what do you think's going on that that you really hold back in meetings, especially? when you feel like you you don't agree and you have something to say and you wait until after the meeting to say it. What do you think's what do you think's causing that? And then I might just have to sit back and, and be patient. <laughs> you know, be silent for a minute and give her a chance to formulate her thoughts and and her response. Because it's important that I not just jump in and start talking when she doesn't answer right away. Especially with someone like Mary that I know is a little bit more laid back and reflective. I need to give her that time to think about it. So I'm going to have to practice some patience with this because that's not always easy for me. You know, I'm ready to just jump in and let's take care of this. So, okay, so there we go. So let's see now. What have I accomplished here? I've thought through it so that I could respond instead of react. All right. I've been, I've told her the facts, told her the behavior I observed, been sensitive positive and very direct about why this is a problem for the team. And now I've really engaged in this dialogue, asking her to be part of it and to give me her feedback on, on what we can do to solve it. I'm exhausted. But wait, there's more. It's step five. All right, so now we need to have some discussion about how to change this behavior to solve the problem. Hmm. You know, in in this step, pause. <laughs> in this step, this is hard if you're giving feedback to a peer because you have to question whether it's appropriate. This is one of those times when you might go, "This is really none of my business. This is not my place." But really, to do effective constructive feedback, this is part of it. And maybe you can be a lot more gentle with a peer than you can in a situation where you're actually doing some counseling of a behavior that needs to change or a coaching situation. Or maybe that's the secret. With a peer, you make it more of a coaching situation than a counseling situation. So you really get more into, is there anything that you think you could do to do this differently next time and any way I can help? You know, so be that helpful peer. Okay, but in this situation, with Mary, she's got to change this because, you know, I can't have somebody coming in the meetings and just going along with everything and pretending like it's fine and then going out there and just bashing the whole thing to the team. That's just not going to work for me or for the team. So I've got to have a serious discussion with her about how she can change this. But I still want it to be a coaching situation. I, I still want it to be a situation where I'm helping her to figure out how to solve the problem. You know, because constructive feedback is not about telling her what to do. It's helping her to understand why it's a problem for the team, a problem for her, problem for me, and helping her to figure out a solution. So what I have for you on step five are what I call five powerful words. 
And this is a way for you to help Mary to voice what she needs to say. So here's some ideas. You could say uh, the five words for those of you that aren't seeing the screen right now are option, idea, recommendation, suggestion, solution. So I can say, so Mary, let's explore some options for how we can how we can solve this problem. Or I can say, Mary, what ideas do you have for solving this? What do you think it would make it easier for you to speak up during a meeting? What's your recommendation for me on how to help you speak up during the meeting so that you don't have to save it for after? I'm open for your suggestions. How can we solve this? What can I do differently? What can you do differently? What can we do? And what solution do you propose? All right, so what I'm doing is helping Mary to think through some words here that will, will get us to a place where we want to go with this feedback, which is how to, how to change this behavior. Okay, uh, so I might say, let's see. Um, so Mary, I'm understanding you to, to say that sometimes you're not comfortable expressing your thoughts and feelings in front of the team. So what do you think we can do to make it more comfortable for you to, to do that? As I've said, we really need your input. What can we do to make it more comfortable for you to be, be able to speak up during the meeting? And then just be quiet. And let her come up with some solutions or options or ideas or recommendations or suggestions for solving the problem. So these five powerful words are really great things that you can help your employee or your peer to jumpstart the conversation on what they can change and what we can do. Like I said, this is a coaching situation, which means they need to tell us how to solve it. If we get into a, you need to do this, that changes the tone of, of constructive feedback completely, right? So we're looking for them to help us solve the problem. All right, that's step five. We're getting there. We only have one more step to go. What could it be? What could it be? <laughs> Summarize and give support. Yeah, that sounds good. Close with words of encouragement and an agreement. An agreement on what we're going to do differently, an agreement on how we're going to follow up even. So the one thing to know if you're the person giving feedback is that feedback produces feedback. So expect them to give you some feedback in return and try to be good about this. You know, be a good recipient, listen, ask clarifying questions and don't defend or justify your behaviors. You know, this remember justification gets into a different thing. Remember that everyone has a right to their own perceptions. I would like to pause here from our scenario and say to you this, you know, constructive feedback goes both ways. And um, I've been doing this whole scenario as if we're the ones delivering constructive feedback. But there are times when people will come to you with constructive feedback and how you handle it is really important. Everything that I've said in these steps applies. So if someone comes to you to, you know, give you some constructive feedback and they're not handling it well with these six steps, you know enough now to be able to guide them to give you something constructive and helpful instead of something destructive and critical, right? So ask the questions that I told you you need to take care of. Ask them, when did you observe this? Give me the facts about what you saw. Give me an example of that. Exactly when did that happen? How is that a problem for others? How is that affecting other people? What suggestions do you have for what I should do differently? <laughs> So you can turn the tables if you're the recipient. But the, the thing to do if, if you are the recipient of feedback is I would encourage you this. Respond, don't react. So if they catch you at a time where you know you're going to lose it, <laughs> ask, ask for a buy. Ask, could we come back and talk about this in a little while? Because right now I'm in the middle of something and this just isn't a good time, you know? So don't get into that reaction mode, get into the response mode. Now with this scenario that we've been talking about with, with Mary, she's gonna give us some feedback and she's gonna tell us that it's just hard for her to speak up in the meeting uh, because 
you know, she's just a little shy and withdrawn. And it takes her a little longer sometimes to think about things. She's a very reflective person. And sometimes it's not until she gets out of the meeting that she realizes how stupid that our ideas are. <laughs> so we need to work with her on, on what we can do to, to solve that. One of the things we can ask in this step with her is, you know, how do you want us to go about following up on this? Um, some people like you to to check in frequently and other people just want you to let it go now as the person in this situation as the person giving the feedback you should probably be the one guiding this you should probably say to mary you know next time we have a meeting you know i'm going to check on you afterwards i'm going to follow up to see if we we did what we agreed because i really think um in the next meeting here's what we're going to do you're saying that it's important for me to call on you specifically to get your input and your opinion, because you're not likely to just blurt it out unless I actually call on you. I understand that you need to feel valued and believe me, you are valued because we really need your opinions. So I can do that, but just know I want your thoughts and I want your opinions to be heard and considered. We need everybody's thoughts, everybody's ideas, everybody's talent to make the best decisions for our team. So I can do that. So in the next meeting, if you don't speak up, I'm going to call, call you out on it. I'm going to call on you and say, what do you think, Mary? And you, I'm asking you to really do your best to express those opinions and thoughts during the meeting. And then I'll follow up with you after the meeting to see if you have any other comments. How does that sound? And so with Mary, I'm going to give her my specific plan for follow up. Sometimes the, what you're talking about, the feedback is so tiny and minor that it is water under the bridge and you can be done with it. The danger is that if you make it water under the bridge and it happens again, that's the danger. Because this, this is the thing with Mary. Remember back in step one, I admitted that, well, actually, this has happened a couple other times, but I ignored it because I think it was a big deal. So that's the danger. So you'll have to make a decision here as how how you about how you want to do follow up with the person just to make it all make it all work out in the end and have an agreement with her a very positive agreement about what she's going to try to do to change it. So those were our six steps. So I started out by thinking through how I was going to respond, right? Then I had my conversation all charted out. I was sensitive told her exactly what I observed, gave her the facts, nothing about how mad that made me, or how it made me feel, right? Talked through that with her. I worked with her to identify why that was a problem for, for the team, why it was a problem for our organization, that behavior, and then got her input as to what she thought could happen differently to keep that from being a problem in the future really encouraged her to have a conversation with me, have a good dialogue, and then finally agreed on what we we're going to do going forward, what I could do, what she could do, and what plan we should have in place for following up after that. Let's talk for a minute about praise. Because like I said, you know, feedback is not just negative. Feedback is also very positive. Praise is something that amazes me because I do a lot of workshops for teams and a lot of leadership workshops. And there's an exercise that I often do with leaders in the beginning of a leadership uh, seminar or webinar. And I ask them, what do you think are the most important traits of leadership? And they will list all kinds of things. Usually about the same, you know, five to seven come up. But you know the one that's always missing in almost every group every time? is praise. We don't even think about it. We don't even think about what an important form of constructive feedback praise is. We don't even think to just say thank you to our employees and to let them know how much we appreciate what they do. I would ask you to look at this continuum. For those of you that can't see it, on one end it says, I offer less praise, and on the other end it says, I offer more praise. Where do you land on that? Are you the kind of person that 
every day you're thanking folks, you're giving that positive, constructive feedback, thanking them for what they did, or are you the kind of person who really doesn't think about it that much? The thing about giving praise is that it really follows all the, the steps that I just went through for constructive feedback because it needs to be specific. It needs to be timely. Have you ever had someone say to you, hey, I saw what you did there. Good job. Thanks. And you're thinking, uh-oh, <laughs> what did I do? What did they see? Oh, you don't really know why they're thanking you. And, and you start having these bad thoughts in your mind about maybe they saw something bad. They were being sarcastic, right? So praise needs to be specific as well. You know, hey, I noticed that you let somebody jump in front of you at the copy machine and when you had a million things to do. That was really a great thing to do for that person. And I appreciate the teamwork. Thanks. You know, being specific. And, and don't forget, too, that, you know, this works outside of the workplace. This also works with your family and friends. I mean, when's the last time you thanked your significant other for mowing the grass or doing the laundry or whatever they do, letting you control the remote? <laughs> Praise needs to be a really important thing in our lives. And uh, I think many of us as, as leaders, we don't think about it enough. One of the exercises I do with my leaders sometimes, this, this might shock some of you, but maybe you'll try it. Uh, there's a couple things. One thing is I give them five quarters and they have to put them in their pocket. They put them in their left pocket. And by the end of the day, their job is to move them to the right pocket. Every time they praise somebody, they get to move it to the other pocket. And you can't believe how many times, especially when they first start at the end of the day, they haven't moved a single one. If they don't even think about it. As a matter of fact, there are some schools of thoughts that say, well, you know, why should I have to praise you? You're doing what you're paid to do. <laughs> Everybody needs to feel valued. And praise is a very important form of constructive feedback. It's like I said in the beginning, if you want people to repeat a behavior, praise them for it. And then they'll know that's something that you want. And they'll repeat it and probably do better with it the next time. So don't forget praise. Very, very important. Uh, one of the things I saw an office do for praise that I think is, is interesting. I just want to give you a couple ideas on this because I, I think it's so overlooked. Um, they all, the supervisor for Christmas bought each one of them a bag of marbles. <laughs> Not because they lost their marbles. They were all different colors. Each person in, on the team got a different color, colored bag of marbles. And she got them this little vase that the marbles went in. So... I on my desk had all red marbles, you have blue marbles, and somebody else had green marbles. We had all different colors. And I was encouraged to go and praise my coworker for anything I could find. And when I did give them one of my marbles so that their jar would begin to have different colors in it. And then we were seeing day to day how much praise was going on because if, if our jars were getting mixed up, that meant we were giving and receiving praise. Isn't that a cool idea? I mean, there are so many things people do for us every day that we're just not very appreciative. We need to be a lot better about that. So I just, I know I'm going on about this, but I just can't get over the fact that we spend so much time with criticism, with constructive feedback, excuse me, with constructive feedback, thinking about it being negative, when really it's also a very positive thing. So let's, let's use it as a positive. So every day, every day is a fresh start. Every day is a fresh start. And let's remember that with our folks. Every day is a fresh opportunity to provide constructive criticism, to help them in some way, to help improve their performance. It's really a very positive thing. One of the books that I was reading on this, you know, when I was refreshing for this session, doing some extra research to see if anything's changed in this world, referred to it as a gift. It's a gift. Don't know if I've ever called it a gift before, but yeah, I guess it is. Anything that we can do to really help people to improve. This helps us to get ahead of problems. You know, we talked about addressing problems. Wouldn't it be great if we just get ahead of them? We're creating a, a, a culture of candor and trust. Having regular dialogue about what isn't working. Wouldn't it be great if we could talk about problems just routinely? It's just like part of what we do. It's not a question of whether we bring it up because we're just comfortable doing that. Focusing on problems, not on people, on systems, not on people, making sure that our praise is genuine, 
Oh yeah, that's the other thing I have to say about praise. You can't fake it. <laughs> it has to be genuine. People can really see through it when you fake it, you know. So you really have to be sincere with your praise. It has to come from the right place. Keep up to date on progress and contributions. Pay attention. That's probably the big advice. You know, in real estate, they say, you know, what's the three most important things in real estate? Location, location, location. I think in management, as far as the constructive feedback goes, it's like pay attention, pay attention, pay attention, because there are opportunities for feedback all the time, every day, negative and positive. We need to be paying attention to that and providing that feedback as needed. Provide timely, constructive feedback every, every single day. Here's a secret weapon for you. Are you ready? The one on one. I don't know if any of you have have one on ones or if you, you you're you've participated in one on ones. But when you're having one on ones with your staff, a one on one meeting. There are a lot of great things that come from it. <clears throat> they are better informed. You're better informed. Your employees need your attention. And they get used to talking to you when you take time to meet with them one on one. You need the opportunity to hear their point of view. And once you get into this, where they're used to coming and talking to you one on one and you do it regularly, you'll be interrupted less because they'll save the problems that they have for your one on one, which is a really good thing. You'll have much better relationships with your people and feedback will become a natural part of the conversation instead of a we need to talk kind of scenario. So one on ones are something that I highly recommend. Um, I even have a formula for it. My thing is, is whenever you have a one on one, you should start with the employees agenda. Ask the employee to come and have an agenda for you. And I always tell my employees, your challenge is, is to hit everything that's on my agenda before I tell you what's on my agenda. <laughs> that's when I know we're really in sync. So talk about new projects, current projects, performance, kudos, corrections, just make it a regular part. One on ones vary too in, in how often you have them with the employee, a brand new employee. You may want to schedule a one on one every week. Someone that's been around for a while, maybe once a month, but never forget the importance of taking that time to meet one on one to make constructive feedback a part of what you do with your employees all the time, every day. All right, so I'm wrapping this constructive feedback should be here are your 6 steps. Thought out and timely and all of a sudden, look, it's not like 6 steps. This just makes sense. This is logical. Thought out and timely stated in terms of facts and observations. A problem definition, a 2 way conversation. Coaching supportive and encouraging. And just to give you an idea. Here's another uh, conversation that I had that I've had to have with somebody recently. <laughs> so listen to this one. Here we go through the six steps. See if you can identify them as I go. But they don't have to be in the order of six steps. They're really just a logical progression of what should happen when you're doing constructive feedback. John, there have been three complaints in the past week about your being rude to customers. Knowing you as I do, I would never think of you as being rude. After watching you several times, I've observed your greeting is really short. You aren't smiling or looking them in the eye and you know how important that greeting is to our entire process. A friendly greeting really sets the tone for the rest of their visit. So why do you think that people are perceiving you as rude? Sit back and listen. Then what ideas do you have for making you appear more friendly? I'm listening. Those are great ideas. And John, don't forget the smile because you have a great smile. I really appreciate what a difficult job you're doing. Thank you so much. And I'm here to brainstorm ideas anytime. So I'm going to be watching and following up and hoping that, you know, we see, we see a real improvement here. Thanks, John. Go out there and continue doing a great job. Could you see how the six steps played into that? Thought out and timely, stated in terms of observations and facts, very friendly, very positive. Define the problem. This is a really important thing in our entire process. A two way conversation, 
sit back, let him respond, some coaching in there. What do you think we should do? What do you think would help? And then be supportive and encouraging. Talk about that follow up and what we're going to do. So that's the constructive feedback process. It's not as complicated as we make it out to be, but it's critical for making sure that we're addressing problems and addressing them timely. We have to be on top of things when they're happening, not putting it off and ignoring them and letting them turn into really big problems that are not so simple to solve. What questions do we have out there? Any questions for us? Yeah, we've got a couple. First of all, before we start, if I could uh, just let you know, I very much appreciate not just today, but every day that you do it. And there's a reaction for those of you who agree that where we can just verbally clap. I'm going to do that for you because you deserve it. And I mean that. I really, truly do. Thank uh, you. You make us think about some of the things that, you know, should be common sense by now, especially as leaders. But sometimes we get caught up uh, in our day to days, too. And, and we don't even take the time to take notice of some of the things that you discussed today. So, thank you so much. A um, couple of questions. Um, number one is, what is a good way to deal with the situation where a manager is ignoring bad performance or behavior other than changing jobs? That is? <laughs> okay, so in this situation, I think you're saying that um, I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Would that be okay? Yeah, sure. So, we can, so we can just talk. I think I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Maybe I'm not going to. Oh, there's the stop sharing button. It's the big orange one. <laughs> so in this situation, you're like the, the the employee and your boss is allowing this to happen, right? Yeah. Okay. That's what it like. So see, I think this might be a good uh, constructive feedback discussion to have with the boss to set it up to think about how you're going to say it. And, and, you know, to say something like, you know, I just attended the most interesting webinar that talked about one of the top demotivating factors in our country and it's supervisors tolerating poor performance. Have you seen that as a problem? <laughs> you know, and then maybe be able to go into a discussion about, you know, I have observed that here. There are situations where we have some people that are not, you know, they don't, they don't seem like they're pulling their weight. Would you agree? And, and, you know, go into kind of a situation like that where you're just kind of feeling it out and you may not get that warm, fuzzy feeling at the end of that conversation because the supervisor may be blown away that you recognizing that you know it because many supervisors that are in that situation think that they're covering it, that people don't see it, that it's not impacting the team. And some of them will hide behind the fact that, well, it's confidential. I can't tell you what I've done, you know. But it, it will erode the trust on the team. It will destroy the performance of the team. And, and if you're on a team where there's no hope, maybe you should consider finding another team. <laughs> because in the long run, you know, that will destroy a team. Good. Um, one of the things that you've mentioned earlier as well is shy people, especially shy people in meetings that you want everybody's input. And I was just wondering, you gave some good examples of what might happen, but I've been in some classes before about it in management. And one of the things that was, and, and I practice this to this day, is make sure you go around the table at the very end and say, I want to get just a quick from everybody, just a quick yes, no, maybe did we miss something or is there something else you'd like us to consider before we make this decision or before we exit this meeting or whatever it is, you know, because some meetings are informative meetings and that's the one where everybody shuts up and takes notes, right? And others are collaborative meetings where we're trying to make a decision, but either way, that was something that I found to be helpful. Do you think that's a helpful thing? I think that's an amazing technique. You know, one of the things that we know about teams is that we many times we'll, when make it an important decision or having a discussion, we do the old, does everybody agree? And we wait for everybody to nod their head. And then somebody walks out of the meeting just like Mary did and says, that's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. And may even <laughs> sabotage what we did because she didn't agree, because she didn't have the opportunity to speak up, because she just wasn't comfortable speaking up. 
And, and the leader of that team, the leader of the meeting needs to stop and go around. I mean, if you want uh, that quote that I said, you know, if you want people to buy in, they have to have an opportunity to weigh in. Stopping to check in and say, okay, before we go, anything else, Brad, is there anything else you're thinking? Can you agree to support this decision once we leave this room? And just watch your body language. If you roll your eyes, I need to stop and say, uh, what's up? You know, what are you thinking? Honestly, People know that there's a point when we have to go with the decision, but I just want you to value me and I want to be heard. And most, there are some people that are just willing to tell you everything during a meeting, but there are some people like this situation where, you know, we have an entire personality that's very shy about speaking up in meetings. And we really have a responsibility to ask them specifically, but not just them, you're right. Check in with everybody and say, you know, can you support this? What are you thinking? Let's not just be in such a hurry that we just let everybody nod their head and think we did it. Right, and especially for the shy people that won't say anything anyway, you know, they have that one little moment, it's like, hey, I noticed you didn't say anything yet, but are we all exactly. We missed something as a team. Right. That way right. it's not just them alone. Uh, that's great. Thank and you see, for that. And, and honest, one more thing on that. If you're practicing constructive feedback, those kind of situations become easier for your people because this is our culture. This is what we do. It's okay for me to speak up. It's okay for me to say, you know, have a different opinion. I mean, I can do that. So having that whole trusting, comfortable conversational environment is part of that as well. Right? No, I totally agree. Um, here's one more question. And I think that uh, we're about ready to wrap up. How does a colleague handle inconsistent feedback? For example, two managers who give very different feedback about the same subject. Mm, boy, that's a tough one. <laughs> that is a tough one. Two different managers gave very different feedback on the same subject. Mm. Yeah. I think I might um, do my own follow up in that situation. I might go back to manager A and say, you know, I received some other um, feedback on this. And it's very different from what you said. So what do you think? You know, get some feedback from them about what they think about this other feedback and then do the same thing with manager B. And, and you know, just see if it can meet in the middle somewhere because that's not a good situation, right? I mean, how do you know what to do? And, and then I think I would also encourage that person to say to them, based on all of this, I'm planning to do this in the future. What do you think? Right. You know, so tell them the solution that they have figured out because I'm sure they have an opinion and a thought about what they should really do and, and see if they can get that man, both of those managers on board with what they're thinking. But I wouldn't let that lay and fester because you can end up in the squeezed in the middle. <laughs> right. right. <They laughs> like an Oreo cookie know. with no cream. Right. <laughs> if, if you have to choose one or the other, well, who's going to feed you? Right. That's what the dog exactly. says in the house. Is it him or is it her? I don't know, but I better be right. one. Yeah, that's really uncomfortable. Good question. No, great questions and great answers as always. Thank you so much. And ladies and gentlemen, just one more time, that's Lorna Sophie. And we're so happy to have her. Don't worry, she is coming up soon. Lorna, we thank you so much for coming today. I have a couple of announcements I'd like to share with everybody um, about upcoming events, speaking thereof. And that would be like next May 14th coming up. I believe that's even tomorrow. We have our restaurant revitalization fund with Rebecca Schultz. We have on the 18th growing a profitable email list from ground zero with Marsha Hudson. And we have on the 19th shuttered venue operators grant, which is absolutely a nice thing that's happening for restaurants, for business owners that own them. You don't want to miss that one. And that'll be with Rebecca Schultz as well. Please don't forget to go to the SBPC website for more information about how you can see what the upcoming uh, webinars will be about and sign up for them and tell others about it. Because of course, uh, the upcoming web webinars that I just mentioned and many more, it's always changing. Uh, when you register, don't forget there's also a survey that comes out like after this one. And if you fill it out, we'll be happy to get with uh, links to this in case you wanted to review any of the information. And it does help us to make sure that we're giving quality to you out there that are business owners to make sure that you're getting some good feedback 
and keep doing this better and better. A few people that we want to recognize, of course, is the Small Business Administration, the state of Texas, North Texas SBDC Regional Office, and North Central Texas College. We thank you all for joining us today, and we look forward to seeing you next time. This concludes our webinar for today. Thank you all for attending. Have a great weekend coming up. Hey, Judy. Yes. Is the recording stopped? <laughs> yeah, it is now. Sorry.